Hey everybody, this is Early Access PyCharm. I'm your host, Nafiel Islam. Today we have a special treat for you. I'm here with Andre Chepsov, who is the product manager for a new IDE that we're about to release called the Data Spell that's going to be targeted towards data scientists. But a lot of the features of Data Spell, in fact, if not all of them, are going to be ported into PyCharm. And I'm just super excited about it. So without much further ado, let's dive in. So Andre, you're the guy that everybody talks to when it comes to the data science features of PyCharm. What have you been up to this past year in terms of data science? All right. I think it's actually a little bit more than and then a year. I think we've started working on that in October uh, 2019. And yeah, many things to talk about. So where do I start? You can start talking about the fact that our data science offering has had a few ups and downs. So what have we been up to in trying to fix that? Awesome. Indeed, it's a good, it's a good, it's a good uh, starting point to discuss the data science support with PyCharm. PyCharm being an ID for Python developers, it's known for its, let's say, intelligent coding assistance, which people like, like refactoring, code completion, and quick fixes. And if you look at the community of Python developers, we'll see that there are totally different, let's say, job titles and uh, mindsets who use the ID. But what what is prevailing? What is what is the if I say if I can say the main one is probably developers. So PyCharm is very well known within the developer community. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, it is. And I think it's for a good reason because it um, really nails the, the core development experience, which is a good support for Git, built-in tools uh, such as Terminal. Of course, the editor is the, is the heart of the ID. And the workflow, it takes, uh, well some time to set up your project, but then you work with that project for quite significant amount of time. And, and then you commit all your work to, to Git, and then that, mm -hmm. that's how it works. And however, Python is a lot more than just development, and there are many other things yeah. going on. And uh, data science is, is for sure one of, uh, one of the other main things taking place. And if we take a look at the, some of the survey surveys uh, asking like how people use Python, Stack Overflow, for example, or JetBrains own survey, we'll see that a lot of people use Python for data analysis and also for machine learning. It's, it's, it's quite interesting because there are different ways of using Python for data analysis and machine learning. So, for example, there are ways, there are software developers which use uh, somehow involved in data analysis. It could be either they, they write software for data analysis, so basically they automate things around data. Yeah. And there are also people who, apart from software development, are involved in ad hoc data analysis, which is a very interesting thing. And also was probably a starting point for us to look totally differently at, at the support for data science within the pie chart. I think that's uh, where it started and, and right. October, basically. But here's the thing. We've added different kinds of support for data science in PyCharm again and again. We did it not just a year ago, but years ago. And we... Something happened. It wasn't what people expected. So what are we doing different this time around to make sure that we nail that data science story? Yeah, that, that's a good one. Thanks for asking. I think if I would if I would say what has changed in their approach we're taking, the main thing would be to look from the perspective of the people who are involved in data analysis and maybe talk a little bit about what, what is it? What is data analysis? What are we talking about? and how it looks like. If, if, if I can describe very briefly and on a primitive level, like what data analysis is and how it's different from development, probably I would describe it the following way. There are certain tools which one can use to look at the data. And when I say look at the data, I really mean it, literally staring at the data. So at, at, at in, rows and rows of random numbers and, and, and fields, huh? Yeah, exactly. And so to to make sense out of data, you have to use certain tools, which we'll talk about. And then in the end, you have to look at them yourself and it cannot be automated to a certain way. You have to look at the, either at the raw data, at the processed data, 
or at visualized data. And this is how data analysis is done. You process data and then you visualize data. And there is a lot of different tools used for that. And so the approach uh, this time around is to really focus on what data scientists want to do and coming at it from their perspective instead of just saying, making it an offshoot of what we offer software engineers in general. So it, it's more about what they need instead of how we can retrofit some kind of uh, data science support into the IDE. Yeah, one thing that is changing now, that what we uh, changed uh, for some time is uh, PyCharm is, is, is very good at providing a way to re- read and write code and, and also run code. And while it's also still very important part of the data analysis, since to do data analysis, you still have to write code. And a lot of things are done through code. Yet there is another key thing, which is interactive way of working with data. And maybe it's... it's so it's that means good... visualizations and, and just getting quick feedback uh, when you input something. Yeah, absolutely. And that's maybe a good point of time to talk about the tools uh, which make data analysis uh, so so efficient, let's say. There are many different tools data scientists use today, and you can you can get a rough idea by looking at this, let's say, surveys, for example, with uh, Stack Overflow or Dev Echo, like what tools data scientists uh, actually use. And what is like what you can immediately see, for example, there's a NumPy library, right? Which lets you work efficiently with data and process this data. And when you process data, you have to analyze what, what you get, like bas- basically look at this data some way. And this is where there are two things come very handy. One is the interactive Python. Uh, yeah. Uh, to like IPython, for example, which implements this REPL mode. When you write something, then you run it, and then you look at it. And then you can run code again, and then you see the results again. So this is a very yeah. different from what typically a code editor offers to you. Yes, absolutely. And the other thing is, of course, the Jupyter Notebooks, which are very famous and there are people who love them and there are people who hate them. And with all of that, you cannot deny, one cannot deny that Jupyter Notebooks is probably the best way today to interact with work with the data. Okay, so in terms of design decisions, you went out there and you just saw the different ways in which data scientists were interacting with data, were working with data, were playing with data. And I'm guessing that in the new thing that we're going to do, the most important thing is going to be Jupyter support and top-notch Jupyter support inside of the IDE. Am I correct in, in assuming that? Uh, yeah. So the one of the main things is a better support for Jupyter Notebooks. So it's, it's not the only thing. I think we'll cover the other things too. But if we start somewhere, Jupyter notebook support is totally the right place to start. If, if, if I can describe very briefly what, what we're going to basically uh, do in terms of the better support for Jupyter notebooks. Prior to what we do now, uh, the approach was to try to see if we can make um, something like Jupyter notebook out of the code editor which PyCharm uh, already has. And this didn't seem to work really well to an, a great number of reasons. One reason is that notebooks are so handy because they can they let you see their results immediately in line with, with your let's say code. So you've and they're also quite portable. You can share them with a friend and, and they can also run the code and they can also see the visualizations or they can see a rendered version of Absolutely. that. So yeah. going back to the old uh, Wolfram Alpha and Mathematica days where you would have like a notebook with different equations being solved by your by your CAS system. Okay, so your main focus is going to be uh, Jupyter Notebooks. You do want to add other features, of course, that's not the only thing, but what are we working on that makes this offering in PyCharm just really amazing to use? What have we done? What what special sauce have we added to make this top notch? Right. Yeah. I think the secret sauce probably would be something very well obvious here. So we're going to take the best part of the Jupyter Notebook. We're going to keep the best part of the Jupyter Notebook and make sure that we, we don't miss any of their advantages Jupyter Notebook offers. So we are talking about the inline cell outputs. We are talking about the common mode, which makes it easy to navigate over the cells and also apply commands using their familiar shortcuts. We are also talking about JavaScript outputs, which 
was a problem previously. If you're using some interactive library like Plotly or Bokeh or Widgets, it didn't work due to the poor support, the interoperability between the ID and JavaScript. This is also something that we're going we're gonna to change. Basically, we, we're going to make notebooks work exactly as you expect them to work with all of the nice things which you like in, in Jupyter Notebook. And at the same time, we also want to keep some of the things PyCharm is typically good at and make sure that it applies to this new Jupyter Notebook support. So in terms of performance, are we working on making this as fluid and as fast and as smooth as possible in, in, in terms of just working with it? Is it going to be a similar experience to writing in your editor where every where the code completion pops up very well and you can debug and you get all the IDE features that you love about PyCharm, but you now have it in like a notebook format. Yeah, so performance is a, is one of the main, let's say, aspects. And so this was a big problem as well with their previous support for Jupyter Notebooks, especially when you start to import a lot of data and then you start to visualize all of it. We used to have problems and now we addressed most of it, which prevented the like the um, easy way of working with Notebooks. So we want to expect at least the same experience which you typically have with Jupyter Notebooks, uh, except that you also get coding assistance on top of that without any... Um, uh, you know, Python isn't, this is of course a PyCharm show, but Python isn't the only language that is prominent in data science. So what other plans do we have for people who are using R, people who are using Julia, or whatever other language that they want to use for data science? I think what is worth mentioning here is we bring uh, a better support for Jupyter Notebooks for Python developers. A big chunk of the work here is to make just independent language independent notebook support with the IntelliJ platform. And while of course the notebook support is super important for Python developers at the point of at this point of time, more than for example R or Julia or other languages, we, we, we think it is super important to make it language independent. And that, right. that, that has to be the case because if you take a look at like the notebook, the IPython kernel, this notebook format is being adopted by Scala. It's been adopted by Julia. It's been adopted by other languages because it, it helps it because it's portable. It helps you transfer the, that idea and that, and that processing work from one place to another, from one data scientist or one data ana analyst to another. Yeah. So building this thing as something that works across languages, I would assume is going to pay out dividends when we support more languages. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I, I actually look at this even, of course, it's a it's, uh, higher return, let's say, on investments on, on, on our end. And now that we support Python, if other people can use it for other languages, we, we don't have to implement it again. That, that's one thing. The other one is, uh, which I think is super important as well, is Python is a super great language for data science Um it does mean that other languages shouldn't also improve the support for data science workflows. And I see a lot of potential in other languages as well. And um, it's, uh, of course, Scala is one case, but I think I personally see uh, here a trend and the data science is going to be a, a big thing also for other languages as well. And if, if you look, for example, at what's going on with JavaScript. Yeah, absolutely. Well, there is a lot of things going on. And like in the end, everybody can benefit out of better support for notebooks in other languages. I can absolutely imagine. But I'm assuming that building that support across libraries, across languages, across frameworks is going to be difficult. But is that made a little bit easier now that we can embed uh, a web browser into the IDE. Yeah, absolutely. And I think you've just nailed it. We can make it possible because we've we've integrated, we found, let's say, a working way of integrating uh, JavaScript and, and the IDE to, in order to make it interactive. And probably now that we support Jupyter Notebooks, it, it's already very easy to support known Python kernels of Jupyter Notebooks. So that's the most easy, let's say, step here. Uh, more difficult steps would be to support non-Jupyter non notebooks, which, of course, they are. 
Yeah. So Andre, last question before we wrap this up. When are we going to get all this goodness? When can we actually get our hands on working with all these goodies that you're talking about? And how can we get it? Yeah, sure. So I, I think it depends on um, if whether you are open to, to try one of their unstable builds, for example, or try uh, some early previews and uh, eager to uh, also share feedback. If that's the case, I would strongly suggest you to join the private beta and, and sign up for that. And uh, we are sending new builds. And basically in, in September, we are going to make it public and available for everyone. So you don't really have to register. It's still going to be an AP quality, which means there are bugs. We fix them. There are going to be bugs, yeah. Feedback. Yeah. And yeah. And speaking of the release of the data spell, currently most most likely that it's going to be there the spring 2022.1 uh, release train of uh, IntelliJ based IDs. So when is PyCharm going to see all of this? It's very likely that PyCharm will get this once data spell is released, which is most likely to happen, yeah, in, in spring. Still chances that it might happen even sooner, but most likely, yeah, uh, spring of next year. Awesome. Thank you very much, Andre, for dropping by, and we'll see you again soon. Yeah, thanks for having me.